It's Platt, and today we double the arrogance. That's next to Platt's Beer of the Week. So the particular beer we have today is the Double Bastard in the Rye. comes to us from Bastard Brewing, a.k.a. Arrogant Bastard. Um... As some of you may know or may not know, this beer was originally created by Stone Brewing. A little background of Stone Brewing. Stone Brewing was founded in San Marcos, California in 1996. Uh, it is the largest brewery in Southern California, and I believe it's one of the top 10 uh, craft brewers in the United States. Uh, definitely Southern California's by far, uh, Southern California's by far most successful brewer. Uh, a little bit into the story of Arrogant Bastard. Uh, the beer was released uh, the year after the brewery opened in 1997. The backstory, which may be more marketing than truth, but uh, we'll, <laughs> we'll discuss that. Uh, the backstory was that they were working, trying to perfect the pale ale recipe, which is their flagship beer. And a batch went awry, you know, something got tweaked with the recipe, and voila, happy accident, we have Arrogant Bastard. Now, the story behind the name kind of builds on that. According to the brewers, no one named the beer. The beer named itself. When it just came out of the fermenter, it was an arrogant bastard. Uh, I don't know about that. I'm sure, sure there's a little more to the story. But again, a great little story uh, to tell. And again, they claim it's the personality, the beer that named it. Um, you decide on that one. Um, but this beer, when it first came out, did take off. Uh, as far as popularity wise, now it it never it didn't outsell the pale ale because this beer is not for everybody. Um, it is a big high ABV beer. It is definitely not for the Miller Lite uh, fans out there. And so, again, sales wise probably didn't compete with the pale ale. But for the hardcore beer fans, uh, really became popular. And you know, just kind of kept growing in popularity and infamy. Uh, especially due to the name, but also due to the beer itself, uh, to the point where in 2015, Stone decided to spin off the brand into Bastard Brewing. Um, now, once you get in the bottle, still comes from Stone. Uh, there's not a separate uh, Bastard Brewing, but just as far as the marketing, and if you think about it, you have to market this beer a little bit different than you would your pale ale or an IPA or, you know, a, bl a blonde ale or what have you so they just decided to kind of you know this thing kind of became its own monster and they just all right you go do your own thing um now they have done a deal where they've contracted out 18 different breweries or they've licensed out to 18 different breweries the recipe for the original arrogant bastard and they're letting them produce it uh breweries like maui brewing badger hill uh, the, the guys at BrewDog, they produce, it's not their take on the beer from I gather, it's the, it's pretty much like Colonel Sanders giving out the 11 herbs and spices to people like, all right, make, make my chicken. Same with the Arrogant Bastard. Now, one of the cool things about this is supposedly the proceeds from the sales go to charity, so that's always a good thing. So uh, if you want to help the kids, go, go drink an Arrogant Bastard. Um, anyway, that's kind of a cool deal, and I I can imagine, let's say, your head brewer at Maui Brewing, and hey, we're going to let you have the keys to this car, and, you know, and make, make Arrogant Bastard. It's probably a cool deal for the brewers. Now, Bastard Brewing, when they split it off, they decided to expand the brand, not just the single beer, but created others. Of course, we have the Double Bastard in the Rye. There's an Oak Arrogant Bastard. There's an Arrogant Bastard Black Metallic Stout. There's Lucky Bastard. And they even have one, and I had to do a double take when I saw this on the website. They have a Jägermeister Arrogant Bastard. Yes, I just said that. Uh, now, apparently, there's no actual distilled spirits in there. It's not just dumping Jägermeister in there, from what I gather. They take that kind of blend of herbs, spices, roots, seasoning, you know, uh, what is it, 56 different ingredients or something like that goes into Jägermeister. From what I gather, they take a lot of those. I don't know if it's the exact same recipe and put into the beer. Half, to, half of me is very tantalized. The other half's kind of, mm, I'm not sure about, but I will probably keep an eye out for it either way. Well, before we try this bastard, though, let's check out the stats. All right, today I thought I would talk about big beers. You probably hear me use that term a lot. And 
in, in my reference, there's no official definition, but in, in my world, I'll just say, we're talking about beers that are high ABV, um, generally 10% alcohol by volume, but higher. Uh, some people may tell you eight to nine is up there, but, but high alcohol beers, uh, to achieve that, the, most of them have additional malt. There's just more that malty goodness in there uh, pr produces a, a, a kind of a thickness, a viscosity to, to that beer. Um, these beers tend to have more body, um, depending on the style. If we're talking about a double IPA or a triple IPA, imperial IPA, uh, we're also really going to ramp up the IBUs. Um, a good way, I guess, to compare it is if I had a bottle of Bud Light here, a 12-ounce bottle of Bud Light, and let's say I had a 12-ounce bottle of this Double Bastard right here. They're both 12 ounces of beer. There's more in that bottle. There's just a lot more. So that's, that's what I'm talking about when I'm talking about big beers. You know, more grain, more hops, more alcohol, more mouthfeel, just more. So uh, that's what I'm referring to when I talk about big beers. One of the first really big beers uh, that I had heard of and that created quite a buzz at the time was the Sam Adams Utopias. Uh, they've had this beer out for years. Comes in a real cool kind of copper. Almost looks like a keg. It's a brew kettle bar, but it looks like... Or, uh, Looks like a still, but it's really a, a brew, uh, a brew kettle. Um, now, I remember when I fir first bar I ever saw had it. I want to say they charged like twenty five bucks for a little snifter like that, and I'm like twenty five bucks. At the time, I think I could have bought like two bottles of Jim Beam for that or something. I'm like, are you crazy? But when I moved out to Vegas, I realized twenty five bucks for a drink's not, <laughs> not as crazy as I used to think. Uh, probably the first big beer I tussled with myself was the Dogfish Head 120 Minutes. Uh, they tweaked the recipe over years, you know, and range-wise, it's anywhere from 15 to 20 percent alcohol by volume. Uh, I a <laughs> pretty funny story. I had a roommate that uh, at the time I he, I'd kind of introduced him to craft beer. He loved the Dogfish Head 60 Minutes. So when we saw the 120, in his mind, well, it must be twice as good. So I remember him coming home. I bought a whole case. Let's get after it. All right. Uh, I think he made a bottle and a half into the evening. I think I got to four, and I, <laughs> I don't think either one of us left the couch that night. Uh, and that's a cautionary tale. Once you get in these big beers, don't drink this like a Miller Lite, or your night will end quickly. Uh, uh, pace wins the race, uh, best way to put it. Uh, as far as the ultra high ABV beers, uh, there's been kind of a running competition on who can produce the highest ABV beer. Uh, the one that really took this thing to the next level was uh, Brew Dog Tactical Nuclear Penguin. What a great name! Comes in, came in at thirty-two percent alcohol by volume. I believe at the time there was a German brewery, and I'm not even going to try to pronounce the name, that had produced something that was thirty-one percent. Well, Brew Dog topped that, and from what I gather, over the next few years, they kind of went back and forth on who could create the highest ABV beer, and they beat each other by like one or two percent. Created a nuclear arms race, pardon the pun, uh, in the high ABV beer category. And kind of got us to where we are today. The current champ uh, comes to us from Brewmeister in Scotland. It is the Snake Venom. Comes in at 67.5% alcohol by volume, 135 ABV. Uh, a good way to equate it, if you're a bourbon drinker, you might know Booker's, which is one of the higher ABV bourbons. Comes in at 126 proof. This is higher th th than that. Uh, pretty crazy to think. Now, some of you may be asking, well, wait a minute. How's that not a whiskey? How's that a beer not a whiskey? Well, they don't distill it, or they don't throw it through a still. The, pro the process they use, because with regular fermentation, you can get into the low to mid-20s, and that's about the best you're going to do. Uh, I believe Utopias has always been a fermented uh, product. Uh, anything above that, though, you're going to have to move to something called freeze distillation. Um, you might check, uh, I did a video on Applejack. Applejack is one of the first things that use freeze distillation. Basically, you would take apple cider, let's say two, three hundred years ago when they founded this country, I'd, I'd brewed up a big barrel of apple cider, and let's say it was around 8% alcohol by volume. I would leave it out in the winter, check it every once in a while, and it would start to freeze, and I would just pull out the ice. Uh, water freezes at a higher temperature than alcohol, so you... When it started getting cold outside, you just kind of siphon off the ice till all of a sudden you went from 8% to the low 20s, let's say. Well, these guys take it to the next level with modern science, and now, we're, again, we're getting up to the 130, uh, 130 proof. It's just insane. Well, enough about big beers.
Let's give this one a try. I like the old champagne stop on here. There is a technique to this. Uh, the six turns, as they used to tell me, sometimes it's five, but it could be six. Now, when you turn these, you don't want you don't want to turn the cork. You want to actually turn the bottle and the cork at the same time, or twist the bottle too. Ah, uh, there we go. You don't want a big pop. All right. All right. That looks like well, we get a little foamy. That looks like flat cola almost slightly murky flat cola whoo oh there's a there's a ton of malt the dark fruits when you get these bigger beers and those darker malts you start to pick up some dark fruits uh this particular beer uh is aged in templeton rye barrels if you're a whiskey drinker you know rye tends to produce a little more of a spicy bite compared to a more corn dominant uh, like bourbon or whatever, you'll pick up more sweetness. This should have a little more bite from the barrel. Now, how much the barrel translates into the beer, we'll see. Let's give her a try. Oh, my gosh. That is a beer of substance. Do you feel it going down? 12.7% alcohol by volume. You're going to notice that. Um, plenty of body. Yeah, that body, that viscosity, it's not thick, it's not syrupy, but again, for a beer, a lot of body, um, boy, the taste lingers, um, a lot of initial sweetness, and even the, the sweetness kind of hangs on, but it's, again, more of a dark fruit, prune, blackberry, those kind of notes, you know, instead of like a, a lighter Grape type sweetness. We're talking about darker uh, notes. Um, this is definitely something I want to sip on. <laughs> I don't even. I doubt I even. You know, knock this back tonight. Um, just, just a nice big beer. Uh, this is a post dinner beer. Um, this is not for everybody. If you're the Miller Lite drinker or even like Blonde Ales or whatever, this is probably not for you. Uh, I'm going to say even like the generic, you know, I just did a Murphy's Stout. We talked about Guinness. I don't even know if this is for those drinkers per se. Um, this is for more of a hardcore drinker. You know, uh, somebody wants to try something a little different. Um, again, you're also not going to drink this like a Miller Lite. Don't, don't, don't try it. Well, I hope you liked this video. If you did, please subscribe down below. Also, please like the video because it lets YouTube know we're putting out good content. If you have any questions, comments, concerns, or beers that you would like me to try, please leave them in the comment section, or you can always contact me on the Twitter page. Till next time, bottoms up.